All right, guys, coming back to sports here after the uh, amazing debate of Chick Flavors Canes. So today, like Alex said, I'm talking about the NFC West. And basically, any of these teams are super competitive and can win the NFC West. There's a chance. But today, we're going to start with the worst team from last year, and that's the Arizona Cardinals. In 2019, they went 5-10-1 and one, and were fourth in the NFC West. They coached by Cliff Kingsbury, who just had his first year of coaching. Didn't do too well. Um, the ranks last year was 16 in total offense and 28 in total defense. Coming into the offseason, their biggest weakness was their defense. They were 28 out of 32. They're terrible on defense. Secondarily, their offensive line was pretty trash too. So they went into draft day and they picked up some pretty big names. They got Isaiah Simmons out of Clemson. He's a linebacker, but he's, dude, the guy's a monster. He plays every position on the defense. He's pretty much rated as the second highest defensive player after Chase Young. Then they went out and got Josh Jones in the third round and picked two defensive tackles in the fourth. In addition to all this, they made a pretty big offseason moves, made a big splash when they got DeAndre Hopkins. We talked about him in the first episode. He's going to be a major game changer. That He's going to be a problem. On top of that, they uh, signed somebody for defense, a couple guys, Jordan Phillips from the Bills, three-year, $30 million deal. And Devon Kennard from the Lions, a three or $20 million deal. Combined, they came up with 16 and a half sacks. So that alone just helps with defense. They also re signed Larry Fitzgerald, a great one, 36 years old, to a one year, $11 million deal, and re signed Kenyon Drake using a transition tag. So I predict that overall, that they're going to finish nine and seven, miss the playoffs. That's way better than they were before. I mean, five yeah. wins to nine wins. That's what I'm predicting. Their strength of schedule is tied for eighth at 0.518. They start the first game off of the season against the 49ers, so I think that's going to be a pretty big test to determine who they are as a team. And uh, so what do you guys think? How are they going to finish? How are they going to fare? I think, I think you have uh, the Cardinals a little bit high on the win, win column. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a reverse, reverse go seven and nine. I, I, I think they're, they're going to be a lot better this year. Um, I definitely have my eyes on them. They they could surprise people, um, but I think they would need a lot going for them in terms of the Seahawks and Niners to even have a really really tank, have a lot of injuries or something crazy have to happen. Um, but yeah, their their first four out of the six, their first six games, four of them are on the road, um, and they have to play the Niners and Seahawks twice. So I don't know about nine to seven, but I'm I'm, I'm thinking more seven to nine. I think they'll be better. I think that they're not going to be like a doormat team anymore in that uh, division where like used to be an easy game for the Rams and the Niners and the uh, Seahawks. I think they're going to kind of put up fights in those games, especially probably because they're the more important ones. But I know definitely for the Rams, it's going to be, it's not going to be as easy as it used to be playing them. I don't even think, I think for the Niners and Seahawks, it's going to be a little bit tougher. They, they kind of have the Seahawks number a little bit. They beat them at least. They beat them once last year, but I, I remember in the past few years they've kind of beat them randomly in games that mattered for the Seahawks. Didn't mean shit for the Cardinals because they were trash. But I think Kyler Murray is going to be a little bit better this season. Kind of surprised me last year with he did pretty well towards the end of that season. Definitely. I mean, like in order for them to do well, a key player for me is Kyler Murray. I mean, he was offensive rookie of the year last year. He needs to build off that rookie season. I mean, his rookie season was stellar. He had 3,722 yards and 22 touchdowns. He also added 500 yards on the ground with four touchdowns. So that in and of itself, he's a mobile quarterback. He gets the job done. On the defensive side, Isaiah Simmons, that rookie, man, he's versatile. He'll be everywhere. He's going he's gonna to be the starting Mike linebacker, so he can make those calls on the field. In terms of fantasy, that I know you guys all want to hear, Kyler Murray, he is, his ADP is 57, and he's ranked QB number six. He's projected to have 293 points with 26 touchdowns. Right now, he's being drafted before Dak Prescott. What do you guys think about that? And I think Dak's overrated personally. Yeah, I'd um, probably fall into that. I don't really think, like, people are now, you know, after the uh, Mahomes deal, everyone's like, Dak's asking for that money. I, mean, well, I don't know. What, I'm not getting into Dak. Uh, <laughs> I think, I don't know if I would pick. I don't know if he'd be like Murray would be my QB, like the sixth QB off the board, but he's, I would say definitely top 10, especially with the added points 
you get with what he makes on the ground. Like those, you know, say it's even if it's just 20, 30 yards, gets maybe gets one score that way, that adds up. Uh, I don't know. I can see him being – I could see him being my QB1. I typically don't draft quarterbacks until much later in the draft anyway. Uh, I'm never going to be the guy that drafts, you know, I'm never going to be the draft guy that drafts Mahomes in the third round. I'm always going to wait. So he could, it, it seems like if he is a quarterback that could fall to me, and I would not be upset about it. Kenyon Drake, ADP is 17.1. He's halfback number eight. DeAndre Hopkins, ADP is nine, and is the wide, wide receiver number two. I personally think that DeAndre Hopkins can compete for that wide receiver one position with this offense specifically, this air raid offense that just passes often. Right. I know Michael Thomas will get that number one spot just because of volume, but I mean, for yardage in and of itself, I think DeAndre Hopkins might be in the running for wide receiver number one. Okay, moving on to the Rams. Tyler's going to hate me for this. But Rams in 2019, nine and seven, third in the NFC West. Head coach is Sean McVay. He did his fourth year last year. For his career, he's 33 and 15 and two and two in the postseason. They ranked number 11 in total offense, number 17 in total defense. Their biggest weakness was their offensive line. Their offensive line was ranked number 31 out of 32 last year. Absolute trash. Their <laughs> secondary weakness is an edge defender that they need to pair with Aaron Donald to make that defense dominant. Draft pick wise, because they lost Todd Gurley, they picked up Cam Akers out of Florida State with, this, with their second with their first pick in the second round. They also picked up a wide receiver, Van Jefferson, with their 57th pick, and Terrell Lewis with their 84th pick. Terrell Lewis is actually a really great linebacker who slid in the draft because of injury concern. But overall, he's, he's really, really good. Um, during the offseason, they signed Sean Robinson. He had five sacks from Detroit. And they also got Leonard, Flo Leonard Floyd from the Bears. Uh, they re-signed Andrew Whitworth, which is their offensive tackle. That guy's a machine, and that guy, he's a legend. 38 years old. They signed him to a three-year, $30 million deal. And they also re-signed Austin Blythe. They did have a lot of losses, though. Corey Littleton is gone, like I mentioned in that podcast, in our first episode. Dante Fowler, also gone. Nicole Roby Coleman signed with the Eagles. Eric Weddle retired. Clay Matthews is a free agent. Todd Graves with the Falcons. Brandon Cooks with the Texans. And Greg the Leg is with the Cowboys. My prediction, 8-8 eight and eight overall, missed the playoffs. What do you guys have to say about that? Uh, so you have them going the other direction. Yeah, I think they get worse. Yeah, uh, it pains me to say this, but I have to agree with you, James. I think there's just way too many questions with this team right now, with all the changes they've had, with their O-line as shitty as it is. I don't even know if Jared Goff is worth protecting to be honest with you um i mean if if they finish eight and eight i'll be happy with that to be honest i don't think we need to just be giving up on jared goff already um he had two pro bowl seasons before last season when the offensive line just fell apart um you know if the offensive line can rebound just a little bit give him a little bit of time that three-headed running back monster that they've got now uh can turn into something great um, I think Cam Akers might be one of the steals of the draft. Uh, Daryl Henderson from last year and Malcolm Brown, the other running back. You know, Malcolm Brown probably would have been a starting running back on a bunch of other teams if it wasn't for Todd Gurley, you know, being in the way. Uh, that receiving core, still going to be legit. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, who I loved when we drafted him four years ago. Um, I thought he was the steal of the draft then. Um, that that uh, tight end core with uh, Higby and Everett. I, it's a tough division. I, I know we talked about this earlier. Uh, I think it was on the first podcast. Honestly, I could see all four of these teams flip-flopping all over the place. Um, I'm going to have a little more faith in my boys, and I think they're going to go 10 and 6. Oh, wow. That's a big go big. Yeah, you, have, you have to have faith in your teams. I don't. 10 and 6. I don't. <laughs> they're going to make the playoffs. Been. Because they're not they're making the dollars on it. Yeah. <laughs> but they'll be, they'll they're, be the five, five or six seed. Yeah, hopefully they're, they're going to have to battle to, to squeeze into a spot. Hopefully they do make it, but their defense needs to step up. Taylor Rapp, I liked – I mean, he's a rookie last year, but I like what I saw. I, ho I hope that he picks it up a little bit and gets a little better. He 
was, you know, learned from what, hopefully he learned some things from Eric Weddle and, um, I mean, Jalen Ramsey is going to have to step it up. He's our new Marcus Peters who we traded to get him. <laughs> um, they're like pretty much the same dude, but hopefully, you know, like that meme where, uh, when they played the Niners and, and rap and, and Jalen Ramsey had that miscommunication and fucking the Niners, I forget the Niners were obviously wide open. They lost that game. It was actually kind of a close game, but it was like when your fucking joystick breaks in uh, Madden. That's that can't happen this year if they want to even squeeze into a playoff spot. So they need to pick it up on the defensive side. Aaron Donald's going to do his thing, but hopefully, uh, you know, they, they got some holes they got to fill in the defense. So we'll see what happens. Fantasy wise, you got Jared Goff, ADP 163, QB 21. Robert Woods is ADP is 50 as wide receiver 17. Cooper Cup, ADP is 50.3 at wide receiver 19. When you guys have a shot at it, and you guys might, who would you pick, Robert Woods or Cooper Cup? Cooper Cup, hands down. Yeah, I'd probably both be in that camp. Depends where they're at, but I'd, I'd want Cup over Woods. I had Woods last year. I'll take Cup this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, moving on to the Seahawks here. Cooper Cup. Good for you, Tyler. Last year, they went 11-5. and five. I hate the Seahawks, by the way. Coached by Pete Carroll. Nine in total offense, 22 in total defense. Their biggest weakness was their offensive line. This year, they're number 32 out of 32. Terrible. Weak. Their, their secondary defense is – or weakness is in D-line. During the draft, they picked up a couple linebackers, but nobody to note, per se. Um, but they did sign B.J. Finney, a starter from the Steelers, center, and also Brandon Shell from the Jets, also a starter. They also picked up Greg Olson from the Panthers to, for a one-year $7 million deal. Um, they re-signed Bruce Irvin for um, um, the Panthers as well. He was part of Legion Bloom back in the day. They did lose a ton of starters, though. They lost Jermaine Effetti as a tackle, Quentin Jefferson, a D lineman, Mike Upati, a guard, Jadavion Clowney. Like the, the defensive end, he's gone to. I predict I'm gonna go, they're going to go 10-6. and six. And They might make the wild card, but they probably won't because of the Seahawks and suck. What do you guys think? I'm afraid of Seahawks. them. <laughs> I think they'll probably uh, trump over the Rams, but hopefully we can win one against them. I I like DK Metcalf. I think he's just going to go off this year. I had him in fantasy last year, like halfway through, and then I dropped him, and of course he went off. And then I picked up Will Disley, who was solid as well, and unfortunately he got hurt. But he uh, he I think I started like zero and six in your league, James, and then he like won me like four weeks straight. So. I'm afraid of their offense and, and Westbrook, of course. I mean, fucking Russell Wilson. I, mean, I was thinking of Russell Westbrook. Russell Wilson's solid. He's, he's always been solid, and I've always doubted him. So I'm going to say he's solid and then watch him not do good this year because I'm saying he's solid. Russell I mean, Wilson, ADP is 54, QB number four. Chris Carson, ADP is 33. Tyler Lockett, ADP is 50. And DK Metcalf, ADP is 60. Here's up to you guys, DK Metcalf or Tyler Larry Lockett. Lockett. Lockett's been good for me in the past. I mean, I, I probably would be sticking with Lockett too. I mean, just always seems to get make the play. Seems like a big go-to for 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 Russ. Um, they just seem to to link up almost every game. I feel like they definitely do. Metcalf, of course. Yeah, you, you would. You would. You would. Pop drop and Lockett. Lockett <laughs> wins. Drafting Lockett. Lastly, the San Francisco 49ers, best team in the league. Eek. <laughs> Last year, they went 13-3, and first in the NFC West. Head coach is Kyle Shanahan, and his third year of coaching went 23-25 and overall. Ranked number two in total offense, number eight in total defense. Their biggest weakness, which is not really a weakness, is their interior O-line, because basically they see more depth. Uh, draft pick-wise, they drafted uh, Javon Kinlaw on the first round, as well as Brandon Ayuk out of Arizona State. Um, additionally, they added Trent Williams, Tom Compton, Travis Benjamin, and re-signed Rick Armstead to a massive five-year, $85 million deal, and also re-signed Jimmy Ward to a three-year, $28.5 million deal. They lost Joe Staley, Mike Pearson, DeForest Buckner got traded, um, Sheldon Day, and they lost Emmanuel Sanders to the Saints for two years, $24 million. I predict that the Niners go 14-2, and two, win the NFC West, Win the NFC, win the Super Bowl. Wow. What do you guys think? Wow. Wow. I don't think that was biased wow. at all. 
No, no zero bias. Not yeah. even a little bit. I think they're gonna have a hangover season like the Rams did. That's just me though. No, I don't. I don't. I, I mean, the, the the Rams are young. They got most of their core back. Like, I don't. I don't see this team slowing down anytime soon. Um, as far as Super Bowl and all that, I don't know about that. But I, I, I for me, they're they're the clear favorite to win the NFC West this year. Absolutely. I, I will say though, when that team was forced to throw, it everything kind of went the wrong way. You what saw it in the Saints Super Bowl. Game? Okay. What about the Saints game? Okay, you're gonna you're gonna call one game out of what 19, 18 games. You so lost Jimmy, because you guys points. lost because he was forced to throw in the second half. Am I wrong? He was cold, man. How do you you run the ball? And for, and, you can and, run the ball for and there's your and there's your problem. And I would say I would say a weakness that may not be a statistical weakness is their extreme extreme reliance on the running game. That when the running game finally gets shoved down shoved back in your face, you can't handle it. And I that I think that that's a big part of the reason why you didn't win the Super Bowl. It's unfortunate you had the Super Bowl in your hands, and he literally threw it away. Didn't throw it to a, to his own teammate. So, <laughs> damn. I'm gonna throw some fire. I love the team. Um, I I love Jimmy G. I love. I mean, I think that um, George Kittle is 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 amazing to watch. It's fun to watch. I think that they're gonna just have to reevaluate how they you know, how they handle those type of situations. We've seen Kyle Shanahan drop the ball twice in the Super Bowl now. That's something that is, that's, that's a concern for me going, going to the Super Bowl. Are they going to win the, the, the NFC West? I mean, if anybody who thinks, if anybody bets against them, I think they're pretty much an idiot at this point. But I had Mostert on fantasy last year too. Guess what I did? Dropped him. Guess what happened? <laughs> he went off. <laughs> that leads me to the next point about fantasy. So Jimmy G ADP is 163, QB number 20. Raheem Mostert ADP is 61, halfback number 22. Debo Samuel ADP 123, George Kittle ADP 23, tight end number two. And their defense is actually the second defense in fantasy. Would you guys take George Kittle number one as your number one tight end, or would you take Travis Kelsey? Uh, it's hard to it's hard to not take Kelsey with Mahomes. Yeah, as his quarterback. Even though where, they have a ton of other weapons on that team. Yeah, but see, because Mahomes can actually throw it to who it's supposed to be going to, or Garoppolo <laughs> yeah. is going to miss the guy to story. win the Super Bowl. No, I'm taking I'm taking Kelsey. Even though George Kittle is a fucking monster, uh, I'm taking Kelsey, and I have the Niners at eleven and five. Wow. Well. I wouldn't okay. um, I'm I'm picking Kittle all day. Um, even though Mah- I think I mean, obviously Mahomes is clearly a, a better quarterback, I think that you're right. He has moral weapons, um, and I don't think you'll get the t- same t- type of targets. I mean, how 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 often was Kittle relied on every single game? And he wants he wants to play every single snap and get the ball in his hands every single snap. And he and he gives himself you know he gives he gives you know that option available is always there. And he just continues to drive the ball up the field. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it for me. I'd say flip a coin. I'll take whoever. Yeah, I agree with Eric. And I think the Niners go 12 and four. And that concludes my segment, guys. Thank you very much. Wait.